Throughout the course of the 20th century, Atlanta has continually reinvented itself. The city's present slogan is every day is an opening day in Atlanta. In the 1960s, at the height of the Civil Rights Movement, Atlanta marketed itself as the city too busy to hate. However, slogans like these that emphasize positive views of Atlanta neglect much of Atlanta's more turbulent and at times tragic past, a past that can be seen in events like the 1906 Atlanta race riots. We're talking about one of the most significant events in Atlanta history and yet an event that um, nobody knows about today. We're talking about an event that was covered in every newspaper in the United States and even internationally. We're talking about an event that affected local race relations for a long, long time, as well as even American race relations. Over a four-day period of time, Atlanta experienced easily sort of the most cataclysmic event in its history since the Civil War. Sort of a four-day rampage that left in its wake dozens of people killed, murdered, wounded, just a frenzy of terror. There had been political upheaval, there was economic upheaval, there was industrialization, there was urbanization, there were changing gender roles, and above all, there was an anxiety about race, and in particular about race and sex. Sort of a feeling of dread that marks the city for several weeks before the actual riot begins. Well, I think the important thing to understand is what a small place Atlanta was in 1906. Around 100,000, and the metropolitan area is now over 4.5 million. If you look at most cities in the South, many of them went into a riot. There were several developments in the summer and fall of 1906 that were precipitants to the riot that helped bring the riot about. There had been a very long extended governor's race between Hoke Smith, who was associated with the Atlanta Journal newspaper, and Clark Howell, who was associated with the Constitution. The principal issue in the race was black disenfranchisement, the removal of black men from electoral politics. Atlanta was sort of at the cusp of what we call the New South, and the New South was a time and a place that was marked by a great deal of change as well as resistance to change, a very volatile period. You have an epidemic of violence that takes place. What happens in Atlanta in 1906 is part of a broader pattern of national violence that really goes from the 1890s into the 1920s, so it's not an isolated incident in 1906. So that's one of the things that you see consistently in this, this era, which is homicide that exceeds homicide. Lynching brought out the most barbaric elements in American society with the curious irony of saying that these things were being done to preserve civilization. So the story of racial violence was in and of itself not an isolated one. While efforts are underway to resurrect and commemorate the riot, the question remains, what can we 100 years later learn from the riot? What does this event mean to us as Atlantans and Americans? Americans. 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 There are people who, if not our direct descendants, there are people who have a personal memory of this time period. Maybe if they didn't live through it, the information was passed down due to them. To us, it may be academic, but to many people, it's personal. It's still a part of their life experiences. Most people in Atlanta, this is ancient history to them. It's like the Indian removal. It's something that just happened so long ago that they can't relate to it. And yet, in the African American community, this is an important element of their past. I think it means something that it, I didn't learn about in Georgia history when I came here, that it wasn't uh, taught and nobody talks about it. Like, it's not in the book, so we were in like, By this time, I hadn't even, had even heard of the right, uh, the race riots in 1906. And it then becomes necessary to have audiences or to have forums in order for the entire community to come in. A way for people to process pain as well as to process learning, to get a, an attachment to Atlanta's history in order to understand what did happen and how it affected the diversity of people who live here. Well, the rise suggests that our ability to deal with massive change in an urban environment oftentimes comes with not only transition, but conflict. What happened to our country and the battle over place and authority and responsibility and power in the 20th century. And the riots are worth studying and worth remembering because they were a part of major change in Atlanta at the end of the 19th and early 20th century. It's helpful to go back and look at the history and remember that at other times we were integrating other migrants into the political economy. We did so not smoothly, but through conflict. How do we manage that conflict? How do we understand that conflict? How do we use that conflict to actually advantage the city? Rioting was part of the process of democracy building, of democracy building. Uh, 
Uh, there's some sort of an official report that comes out later that year where they say that there were 10 black people and two white people who died during the riot. When if you read the newspapers, you know, it's obvious the figure is, is, is much higher. You, you, we may never know exactly how many people died. 